Here we're going to look at a little number theory problem from the Mediterranean Math Olympiad. So our goal is to find all natural numbers n such that this factorial of factorials object given by 1 factorial times 3 factorial times 5 factorial all the way up to 2n minus 1 factorial is the same thing as this triangular number 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way up to n factorial. And so like with all of these, I think there are probably several approaches, but I think the cleanest way here is to use a powerful tool from number theory. And I think this tool is fair game in math contests. But maybe post down below if this tool is actually not fair game, and maybe if you can see another strategy for solving this problem. Okay, so let's maybe get that tool on the board. Okay, so that really powerful tool that we will use, which like I said, is not often used in math contests, but it's sometimes helpful, and I think it's fair game in math contests, is called Bertrand's Postulate. And it says, for all numbers bigger than one, which I'm calling M, there is a prime P, such that M is less than P, which is less than two M. So in other words, you can always find a prime between a number and twice that number. Okay, so how can we apply this to our problem? Well, let's notice that this left-hand side is a product of a bunch of descending numbers. And really, if we just focus on what's happening to this 2n minus 1 term, we see that this 2n minus 1 factorial includes all of the numbers between 1 and 2n minus 1 in the product, including all of the prime numbers. So let's maybe write that down. So all primes smaller than 2n minus 1. I guess I should say smaller or equal, but I won't write that down. I'll let you guys just keep that in mind that we mean that we mean smaller or equal, divide the left-hand side of our would-be equation. Okay, so our goal is to somehow construct a prime that divides the right-hand side, but not the left-hand side. So let's write that down, so construct a prime, I'll call it P, such that P divides the right-hand side, but P does not divide the left-hand side. But luckily, we've got a good handle by our earlier observation of all of the primes that divide the left-hand side. And those are all of the primes up to and possibly including 2n minus 1. So what prime should we take? Well, it's got to be a prime larger than 2n minus 1. But, I mean, there are infinitely many primes larger than 2n minus 1. So we probably want to bound that above by something. And we can do that just with Bertrand's postulate over here. So let's see. Bertrand's postulate applied to our problem implies there exists a prime Again, I'll call it P, such that we know that P lives between 2n minus 1 and twice 2n minus 1, which is 4n minus 2. And so I want to notice by our construction, we see that P does not divide the left-hand side of our setup. I'll write that out, 1 factorial, 3 factorial, all the way up to 2n minus 1 factorial. That's because it's a prime that's larger than 2n minus 1. But now we'll be off to a really good start if we can answer the following question. And that is, when does our prime p divide the right-hand side of this equation? And I'll write that out in this case, 1 plus 2 plus all the way up to n factorial. And let's go ahead and point out that in this setup, when P does not divide the left-hand side, but P does divide the right-hand side, that is most definitely bad because that means we 
will not have a solution because one side of our equation will be divisible by some prime that the other side is not divisible. So in fact, we wanna throw these numbers out and look at what's left over. So now let's tackle this question in pink. Notice that P will divide this factorial if and only if P is less than or equal to this triangular number one plus two all the way up to N. Why is that? Well, that's because when you take this factorial, you're gonna have a product of all of the numbers that are less than or equal to this, including whatever prime. We'll pass that prime along the way. But there's a well-known closed formula for this triangular number. This means that P must be less than or equal to N times N plus one over two. And so it's a little bit easier to work with this N times N minus N plus one over two. So let's notice that if we sneak a 4n minus 2 into this inequality, then that gives us like a slightly stronger inequality to try to work with that only depends on n. So let's write that as it will follow if, um, let's see, n times n plus 1 over 2 is bigger than 4n minus 2, really bigger than or equal to 4n minus 2. Again, because if we can fit this n times n plus 1 over 2 above the 4n minus 2, then our p is most definitely smaller than our triangular number. Notice this is just some inequality involving a quadratic expression, so it would be pretty easy to solve this for the values of n. So notice that this occurs if and only if n squared plus n is bigger than or equal to 8n minus 4, which occurs if and only if n squared, let's see, minus 7n plus 4 is bigger than or equal to 0. Now, I'll let you guys figure that out. You can find the roots of this quadratic equation and then maybe look for the closest integer less than or equal to those roots as appropriate. And what you'll see is that this occurs if and only if n is bigger than or equal to seven. But let's recall that this n bigger than or equal to seven was in fact our bad condition. What do I mean by that? Well, this n bigger than or equal to seven implied the prime did not divide the left-hand side, but it did divide the right-hand side, which gave an impossibility. So in other words, in this n bigger than or equal to seven case, there is no solution. So, well, what does that mean? That means the only possible solutions occur when n is between one and six which is nice because, because we can easily check those by hand. And that's exactly how we'll finish this one off. On the last board, we had what I think was a pretty cool argument showing that there are no solutions to our proposed equation when n is bigger than or equal to seven. So from that, it clearly follows that the only possible solutions occur when n is between one and six. So now we're gonna look at each of those in a case by case basis. And to be honest, we'll probably only look for a couple and I'll leave the rest as homework exercises for you. Okay, so let's maybe start with n equals two. Maybe n equals one is not super necessary. You guys can easily do that one on your own. So let's see, what happens when we have n equals two? Well, in that case, two n minus one is two times four minus one, which is three. So that's useful to know because our left-hand side goes up to this 2n minus 1 factorial. So let's notice that our left-hand side in this case will be 1 factorial times 3 factorial, but that's just 3 factorial, which is equal to 6. And now our right-hand side will be the triangular number 1 plus 2, and then take the factorial of that. But notice that 1 plus 2 is clearly equal to three, factorial is six. So that means we're good to go here. Let's box this in green to show that we have a solution. Okay, let's maybe look over at this n equals four case. We'll leave n equals three for you guys. So let's see, if n equals four, then we have two n minus one is equal to eight minus one, which is seven. Okay, that means our left-hand side 
is equal to 1 factorial, 3 factorial, 5 factorial, 7 factorial. And then our right hand side is equal to 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way up to 7 factorial. Okay, but let's recall we've got a standard formula for this triangular number. It'll be 7 times 8 divided by 2. In other words, it will be 28 factorial. So here we have 28 factorial. But now let's notice that that does not give us a solution. For instance, let's notice that 11 divides into the right-hand side. That's because 28 factorial includes a factor of 11, but 11 does not divide into the left-hand side. So let's maybe put a x through this to show that there is no solution. And then I'll leave the remaining three problems for like little homework exercises for you guys. And that's a good place to stop.